This is Thomas, and uh, I am here finally with another uh, graph editor tutorial today. And as you can tell from the silly picture, uh, this uh, tutorial is going to be a little bit silly. Today we are going to talk about a, uh, a key difference between uh, the motion editor and the graph editor. And um, this is really uh, crucial, actually, because there's a lot of really fun stuff that you can do with the graph editor, and you're going to spend a lot of time there, or uh, sorry, in the motion editor. But um, today we're going to talk about... Uh, bending the rules a little bit, taking uh, existing animation and and doing things with it that in general you wouldn't really be able to do with the motion editor pretty much at all. Um, and uh, we're we're, we're going to be a little lighthearted today, as you can see from this this video here. We're we're going to do some things a little different, but uh, let's just jump into this shot really quick before I get to the main video uh, that I wanted to show. So first of all. Um, this is a simple video of the uh, the heavy bouncing around here, and what I've done is I've I've taken a look at the bouncing ball tutorial that we did before, and uh, kind of applied it to the heavy, turned the heavy into a ball, and uh, pretended he was a ball for a second just to demonstrate a few things. Now, first of all, you'll notice that there's some simple translation and rotation happening here. Well, watch what I've done with the rig really quick as it gets closer to bouncing. You'll notice something interesting happen. Yeah, a little, little something weird there happened, huh? Now, what I've done is I've actually translated the bones that normally would not translate. Like, you couldn't fiddle with the bones in rotation and make it do something like this, where you're actually getting a stretch happening. and this is not realistic. This is not something that would happen in real life. But what it does is, what happens is you, for this brief moment right before he hits the ground where he speeds up, it, it, this is kind of what motion blur does when you create a video, is give the illusion of uh, uh, motion. But what it also does is it gives energy. Uh, it, it implies force. So what we're doing is we're getting this downward force here into the ground and he kind of squashes into a ball, kind of like a rubber ball would. And it's it's more visually interesting and gives energy. So you also notice that I translate the spine the opposite direction. He squashes here. And then I have him shoot off the ground. And I didn't finish this. I just wanted to show this idea really quick because I didn't really make it work. And uh, things started to mess up once I tried to make this longer. So uh, but I just wanted to show this idea so you could see the legs. It kind of happens to he kind of just totally squashes up there. So I wanted to get you in the right mindset. So this is the mindset that we're going into, is we're taking the existing, what we're used to doing with SFM, where we're just taking the rigs and, and doing things interesting with them, and, and actually breaking them and doing something that's very uh, out of character. Now, let's just take a look here really quick at the graph editor. This is something that you could technically do, I suppose, with the motion editor, but why would you? Look at this. One, two, three frames where I'm stretching him. And then back to super squashed in two. And then, you know, back to normal in no time in like one frame. So I suppose if I wanted to, I could, you know, highlight these areas, you know, get the, you know, looking at the arcs here, I'd have to do this. And I have to do this, and maybe I do a little bit of a fade out here, you know, something like this. And I'd have to like premeditate everything, and it 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 can work. But I mean, look at how easy it is to do and stuff like this. And we'll, and I'll demonstrate more in the next shot that we're going to talk about. So I had this idea of just taking some existing motion, which is the shot we've got right here. I'm going to show you that shot. So this is just the heavy running. And then he looks up and he decides, I'm going to jump off this. And what I did, this is just all planning right here. I took the existing motion, I just stopped it. So if we go into the graph editor here and take a look at his root. I did animate the root because 
I know I've said in the past, don't animate the root. That's ex assuming that we're creating our own animation from scratch since we're using existing motion. The root is the base of, of motion when you capture it, so you can't really get away from animating the root here. So this is an exception. It's also easy because he's in the air, and it's a little easier to animate the root if he's not touching the ground. But if you're trying to do a walk, don't even bother. Anyways, so I did, I just, you can see, I was able to just keyframe and stretch it out. You know, usually what I did is like, you know, keyframe once, keyframe twice, grab the second group of keyframes, and you can use a little tab up here, just stretch it out to over here. That's what I did. And then I have him just forget the existing motion. I just had him drop straight down. So what we're going for is, well, let's do something a little fun and goofy. So we're just going to do this little thing where he gets scared. He realizes he's up in the air, he does a little wily coyote thing, and he falls down. So don't even, don't even think about trying to do that in the motion editor. So here's an example of another shot. Uh, this is the same shot, and this is where I've done a little bit more planning here, get an idea of what I want to do. So I've got him stop. I've got this little pose. <laughs> and uh, he looks down, oh no. And then I have this next shot where he's just kind of running in the air with his feet, and then he kind of just falls down just like that with his feet still going. So let's take a look at that really quick just to show you what I've done here. Uh, let's just look at the pelvis. You'll notice I'm using flat keys. And I would actually recommend doing this after, after I did try it out. I really did like using the flat keys here because what it does is that we're communicating simple ideas. There's something specific that we want to get across. And a lot of people like to use flat keys for this reason when they're blocking things out, especially if they're, they're doing something very expressive and, and purposeful. Not so much realistic motion where you're kind of copying a video or a reference of someone doing something. You know, this would be like, I, want, I have this specific idea. I want him to get through here. I want him to stop. I want him to go, ah! And I want him to do this. And then his feet's going to be running in the air. And then I want him to drop. And the root is where he drops. So that's why you don't see the motion there. But if I go to the root, you can see flat, 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 linear. And you notice I didn't do a flat tangent here. It's just a straight line. just immediately starts dropping. Very cartoonish. Let's take a look at the legs. You can see what I did here. I basically just took one pose of his leg back here and one pose of his leg back here like that and I just let the animation go as is and it's it's pretty goofy but it works all right so now I took some time and uh, I finished the shot and so here is the final result hopefully I got the sound working this time it sounds like it so here we go oh it's not the right shot And there we go. <laughs> okay, uh, let me turn the sound off really quick. And uh, hopefully that doesn't make any more sound. All right, so let's just take a look at the shot again. So this is obviously, it was very choppy before, so get an idea of what's going here. So existing motion, still all the same. And first thing you'll notice, something I did from just took a couple of frames here to leave the foot planted where it was to give a little bit of a stretch just to demonstrate something you could do from like we saw from the last video where I was able to translate the foot and create that squash effect. So this isn't something like you'd see in like um, a video like Odd Engies where you basically take the motion editor, move the body around into some weird configuration by translating properties and kind of just letting things go like that. This is a very temporary change. We're not changing the physical properties of the character. We're bending reality, so you know he's he's stretching for this brief moment to give a little bit of the illusion of motion blur, but more to create that bouncy energy of a of a cartoonish jump that you wouldn't get, you know, from realistic motion. Um. So what I did here, let's take a look at the spine here or the pelvis. Okay. So what I did was um, I took the existing flat key. You'll notice that the, uh, the elements of the flat tangents are still there, but they've been messed with. So this is a really simple technique for making uh, a simple 
you know, idea, like having that jump that really, you know, it feels really good where things just pop like, ah, oh no, ah, it's very cartoonish. But while still, you're still in a 3D space, so there's a lot more you could get away with in 2D animation. You kind of have to blur the lines a little bit. So you'll see with this pelvis, what I did here, pretty much you get an idea, is that I took the existing frame and I kind of have a little bit of a transition. So there's still a little bit of a stop, like he stops in the air, he says a little settle motion there. And you'll notice, uh, instead of it being a straight flat tangent from this post to the next, I, I actually made a second key so that we have a little bit of a linear curve here just to give us this brief motion where you can see how he got from point A to point B. And you could spread this out if you wanted like to three frames, but the way it felt in the motion, you really can't see it here, I apologize. But I felt like with two, it felt the best, and so I decided on that. But So instead of just having that quick transition, you can keep the spirit of it by still making the transition very quick, but then giving the eye permission to see how he actually got there just a little bit. And if I wanted to get really nitpicky, maybe I can move his hands. So instead of going up like that, maybe it comes like the arc is from here to here to here. It's it's really, you know, that's that's in betweening, but it's it's one frame, so do you really you're not really gonna be gonna see it. <clears throat> uh oops. And uh same thing you see here. Now here's another trick I wanted to show really quick. I essentially took this pose that was just held and I, stag I, I basically rotated him a tiny fraction and um, just copied and pasted over and over again. And because we're recording, you really can't see it very well, but in motion, he gets this little Scooby-Doo effect where he just like goes, ah! and it went fast in motion, goes really fast. And then you can see the transition I mentioned, one, two, three frames here, give him the opportunity to turn and do this little thing. You'll notice I left, um, the arms, and this is kind of something you can pick and choose to do. I chose to kind of give it a little bit of a curve just so that there's some motion to focus on where it feels like he's reaching, give his arms a little bit of energy rather than being static like the rest of the body. And again, this is all just very cartoonish, but this is the kind of stuff that you can play around with and, and get away with. I left the legs as is. You can see the head is also doing a little bit of a curve there. And then finally he falls. And notice I didn't Everything else, I, you know, I, I pick and choose what I want to emphasize. So he's falling. So I didn't make that fall off a flat tangent like a realistic fall would be. Like normally, you know, where's the root here? You take this root. Oh, I guess I did decide to do that. So I decided that it looked better to have just a little bit of a fall off there and then he falls. And you'll notice that the arms rot uh, rotate up. So you get this... Uh, you get to see him for a little bit longer and you get this nice shot where his hands are the last things you see, which is also a little cartoonish touch. So I'm gonna make one more sound attempt here to have this play with sound. Hold on just a second. Oh, no sound. His echo. All right, so that's that's basically the what I wanted to touch on is those simple ideas of um, what you can do in the graph editor um, to do things that you really normally couldn't be able to. You saw a lot of this kind of stuff with Gary's mod, and uh, I think that those kind of animations really more came out of necessity because it was really difficult to do anything otherwise. You didn't have easy to use complex tools like the motion editor and the, and the the curves on the graph editor to create you know, pleasing, realistic motion like in the game. But there was a little bit of a charm to Gary's Mod stuff. I'm sure there's people out there watching this video saying, yes, I love these types of videos. I'll watch Gary's Mod videos all day. Well, here you go. Here's how you can do it. Uh, so I hope I don't make anyone angry that I'm showing people how to do this. But, <laughs> uh, you know, it's fun to just do things goofy and, and not quite so realistic. Have some fun. So take these ideas, you know, try it out. Squash, don't be afraid to squash and stretch things. Um, do it in a limited sense though. You know, you want it to do it for a reason. You want it to have a, a purpose, like, you know, like the leg jumping to give the leg an energy when he jumps. Or when I'm doing the bouncing ball thing to give him the, to give the impression. I want to give people the impression he's like a bouncing ball, so that's why I did it. So 
those kind of ideas. I'll go ahead and render this out just so you can see the final product in full motion, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Talk to you later, guys. <laughs>